Well, if you can see, back over there is our old shooting spot. There's still some people shooting there. But that's state trust land now, so we just followed the road on back. And I uh, don't know if you can see back over here. See if I can find him. There's a guy way back over there in a truck. He's shooting. And we are back in this area. I thought this looked like a good area. Here's our target. If you can see beyond our target, there's a good hill back there for a backstop. So this ought to be a pretty safe place to shoot. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of testing of the hand loads today and uh, put some rounds through the Model 64. So we'll be back in just a minute. Tennessee Franks here at our new shooting spot. I got the Model 64 out, got her loaded up with some of my uh, 158 grain lead semi wad cuts. We're going to put some rounds on target. Then we're going to do some tests with uh, some Lehigh Defense uh, Extreme Defender ammunition that I loaded up. I want to see what it's going to do. We'll run some rounds over the chronograph, put some rounds on target. So, like you see from the introduction, we found a uh, new spot to go shoot and uh, yeah, it's just a little bit further back from where we were shooting before so not not too much of an inconvenience um, but, but it does seem like a pretty good spot so uh, yeah got the model 64 out and uh, shot it to check it out see how it's going to do while we were out uh, did some hand load tests with the, uh, the little bodyguard and the 64 on this little guy, that's a loaded round. Um, we can go ahead and here's the the actual bullet. That's a Lehigh Defense Extreme Defense. See a little hollow cavity. That's a hundred grain solid copper, and uh, it's got that new technology. I mean, uh, verdict still out. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be better than these hollow points or not I mean they say it works as good as a hollow point it, it you know causes as much damage I don't know until I actually hear some real-world shootings with this um, to see how effective it is it's gonna be hard to tell um, it did do a pretty good number on a milk jug which we can take a look at I'll roll some footage in real quick um, before we look at the jugs let me roll this footage in Like you see, uh, it, it smacked that jug pretty good. Here's the entrance hole. Crack that open good. And then exit hole, I mean, it it tore the jug up pretty good. So, yeah, it, it's transferring some energy. There, there's something, something going on with these little flutes. It, it's transferring energy. It's not acting like, a, you know, a round nose or semi-wad cut or something or ball ammo. It is actually transferring energy, doing something. So, uh, yeah, I got high hopes that maybe it'll be pretty good. But uh, we can look at some targets real quick of how the Model 64 did. And uh, then we'll look at some uh, targets with the, the 38, the little bodyguard as well. But uh, let me get these targets over here. And uh, first thing I did with the 64 was go ahead and uh, put six rounds on target with my 158 grain lead semi wad cut hand load that was always our go-to back in the day and you can see it's you know we aimed right about here it's hitting where you're aiming not bad not a bad little group uh, then I went ahead I, I put six of the uh, extreme defense on and you can see it aiming here but see where they're hitting lighter bullet is going to hit lower because you're not getting the recoil that's always kind of a little 
phenomena you get with uh, fixed sight revolvers. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, and then a little, I guess you call it a flyer, it's still pretty close. Those little things are accurate bullets. And I think that's because they are machined uh, out of solid copper. So you get real precise when you machine something. You can get the weights just perfect, the diameter just perfect. So that made this little guy shoot real accurate. Of course, we look at our little uh, snub nose there. And then I pulled one down here out of the circle. But yeah, not bad, not bad at all. And then kind of the same thing uh, with the, the extreme defense bullets. I got two here, two here, and one actually got pulled off paper down about this area. So it's shooting lower too. You know, we're a full inch, inch and a half low with these lighter bullets. Um, so that makes me kind of wonder if I'm going to carry them or not. Um, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, accuracy-wise, they're not bad. Energy-wise, I mean, you saw the milk jug. They seem to be putting a lot of energy on target. Um, they're just hitting low. And, I mean, unless I go out and shoot these some more, and kind of verify where they're going to hit more. I don't know if I'd carry something that hits that low. Um, a little high is not too bad, but a little low like that, you can really uh, miss a shot because you're not seeing where the bullet is going to hit over your sight, where if it's high, it's hitting under your sight. So it, it's really hard to compensate. Um, I did put some more 158 grain semi-wad cuts through that guy. And I mean, it's just, it's tearing it up. Hitting a touch left, but that's not bad. It's still right there, grouping beautiful. All that's seven yards. And I actually did this double action. I wanted to see how it was going to work double action. And it's hitting good. I mean, for me, that's more than acceptable. Um, so, yeah, this, this is a real winner. I like this. I got my grips, you notice. And all these have been safety checked. But we'll look at them again. But I got my uh, grips. These are the Hogue Mono grips in the Pau Ferro wood. Real pretty. I mean, they just, these grips fit your hand like a glove. Um, on my old Model 13 that I used to carry, which is kind of a blued steel version of this in 357 instead of 38 Special, I had a very similar style grip, but they were nylon. Back in the day, Hogue made these out of nylon as well. But uh, you can see, nice nice grips. I did pick up some speed loaders. Got to have my speed loaders. I did get a holster. And uh, these are the Bianchi. See if you can see here. And uh, Midway has been having these on sale. It's uh, the number 7 Shadow 2, they're called. But yeah, that's a Shadow 2. Um, you saw this same style with the little uh, SP-101. I like this kind of a pancake style holster. It, it hugs the body well, helps you in concealment. Um, but yeah, nice nice holster. That's going to work real well with this gun. I'd like to maybe get an inside waistband at a later date. I know a lot of people think these 4-inch uh, K-frames are too big to conceal. They're actually, they're not. They're still fairly thin. I mean, if you kind of for a revolver, they're they're not really that thick, so it's still pretty pretty easy to conceal these guys. I mean, you can kind of compare, and uh, this has been safety checked too. You can kind of compare thickness with this. This is a little bit thinner, not a whole lot of difference though. But uh, normally my little 38 I have here uh, is something that I'll pocket carry get this back on the holder. It's not always easy as it looks on TV. Um, I'll pocket carry in the little DeSantis and then uh, carry a backup with the, the little magazine pouch. <laughs> this is for a Glock magazine pouch but it'll hold a speed strip just perfect. You can slide a speed strip right down in it. Keeps it oriented in your pocket well. And I'll, I'll do that for uh, either revolver. Carry that and then maybe an extra uh, speed loader or two. But we can look at some results from these little 100 grain 
bullets too just to get you an idea of what we're talking that's the Lehigh Defense 100 grain extreme defense 38 special hand load out of the bodyguard it was running uh, 911 feet per second 184 foot pounds out of the 4 inch 1049 244 foot pounds difference of 138 foot pounds or 138 feet per second 60 foot pounds so you can see you drop two inches of barrel you're giving up some I mean that's that's you know that's not anything to sneeze at 60 foot pounds of energy so you do you do give up something going with a, a shorter barrel the little revolver like that and the funny thing is according to Lehigh's loading data I loaded a 10 Thunder Max um, just for some wiggle room they were getting a thousand fifty feet per second with their maximum load which I assume was, it was out of uh, I don't have to assume I know it was out of a 4.2 inch barrel I remember reading on that 4.2 inch barrel they were getting a thousand fifty I went a tenth under to give me some wiggle room and I was getting right there to thousand fifty as well so their loading data if you uh, pull their loading data down to load ammo it's pretty good. They're they're on track. They know what they're doing with their loading data. They've researched it, I guess, and they know uh, you know what's what. So I just wanted to kind of bring this in real quick and do an update on not only shooting the Model 64, but on this little hand load. Um, they make 120 grain in the Extreme Defense. I may give that a try and just see what it'll do. But yeah. I mean, here's kind of the proof. See that entrance and that nasty exit. So when it hit this gallon jug, it transferred some energy. It, it did something more than just like a full metal jacket would have done. It actually transferred some energy. So, uh, yeah, this may be like the, the wave of the future. They may be onto something here with, with uh, this style of bullet. And like I said, it's barrier blind. You don't have to worry about it clogging up with clothing like one of these hollow points hey who knows maybe like I said the the the, the new thing now um, so yeah hope you enjoyed the video like I always say either we stand up for our rights or we can sit by and watch them go away y'all have an awesome rest of the day we'll talk to you later Tennessee Frank out of here